why should you subscribe to best US MLA tutor? Well, a lot of the times, medical students and even doctors taking US MLA, they are so overburdened with the amount of information that um, they haven't had a time to think of why things happen the way they are. For instance, let's take an example. There's this old white lady, she fell down and broke her hip. And an open reduction in term fixation was done by the orthopedicians. And the next day in the evening, you're on the round. And now you notice during physical exam that this woman has a petechial rash on the upper body, which means like bilaterally on the axilla, neck, shoulder, upper chest, and maybe even in the conjunctiva, mouth, nose, you know. So this petechial rash is on the upper body. So what do you think is going on here? If you have two differentials, hmm, you know, you won't be able to narrow down to one. People who narrow down to two on USMLE, they don't get a good score. The ones who narrow down to one, they get a good score. So what is it that arises in our body? Or, you know, human body is almost 60 to 80 percent water. <clears throat> what are the things that rise up in the human body or rise up in water? So if you take this uh, bottle of water and think that this is the old white lady and we take a syringe and fill it with fat to simulate the bone marrow from the long bone fracture and we inject it and whether we shake it or not, we let it hit sit for a little bit. What we'll notice? The fat moves up. Now you know. When the long bone fracture happened, right, the blood came back to the venous circulation, uh, went through the right heart into the lungs and some of the fat came back into the left heart. And remember, flat is always floating on top. So when the left ventricle is ejecting it into the arch of aorta, the fat is lining the top of the aorta and is being ejected into the right brachycephalic, left common carotid and the left subclavian. So now all this fat is going to the upper body and that is why it's getting deposited here. You understand that? So fat floats on water. That is the reason why I'm so sure that when I saw this woman the next day with the upper body petechial rash that I know that this is fat embolism, I don't have to think of anything else. That is one uh, way to kind of learn medicine. Another one is how to read and comprehend better. Now, I don't recommend using UWorld to learn skills to do USMLE questions. I would recommend NBME questions to do that. Or, you know, the free tutorial that they have for the USMLE step one, step two, and the step three on the USMLE website. You should be using that to build your skills. The question writers on UWorld, they are not as skilled as the ones on NBME. So let's take an example. Uh, let's say I start reading a question. It says a, an 87 year old woman comes to the physician. Now, you know, I see, look at down at the options and one of the options says Alzheimer's disease. So what are the chances that this woman could be suffering from Alzheimer's disease? Pick a number from zero to hundred. What are the odds? What do you think? What's the probability? I know they're not two, 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 two are different, they're not the same thing. But pick some number, you know. I've been teaching for over 10 years, 40,000 hours, one-on-one -on -one tutoring for all the three USMLE steps, and even the step two CS also, so all four. So most students have been picking like 50%, 40%, 70%, 90%. Now, if you actually visualize this scenario, like a really old white lady, she, you know, came to your office by herself without any help from her family members or somebody like staff from the nursing home. If that's what's going on, hey, I, I don't see any Alzheimer's going on here. So by just reading half that sentence in the very beginning, I can already eliminate Alzheimer's disease. Now I would like to be you know, flexible. Now later on, if I find a lot of findings which point towards that, I will change my answer. So flexibility is the key to success here. And you should never pick answers based on just associations alone. 
you must have findings. Patient should have symptoms related to that. You should have findings related to that. You should have uh, labs pertaining to that. You should have some images, if they're giving you any, that uh, explain what you're picking. So it's like an evidence-based medicine, you know. If you want to learn how to do questions, if you want to learn how to comprehend medicine, like where truly you have eyes inside the patient and you can kind of see how the things are going. For example, you know, why do you think that 97% of babies are born with head first, normal vaginal delivery? Why the head is coming out first? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought of why the developmental milestones go craniocardially? Why the eye baby can focus the eyes, then they can smile, and then they can hold the neck, and, and then the, as, the, as the milestones are moving down the arm, they're also able to support their back, like, you know, they can turn around, and then they can sit uh, first with support, then without support, then they crawl, and then they creep, and then they walk, and run, and they go up the stair, then down the stair, like that. Why it's going this way? Why not that way? Why is head so big inside a fetus or a newborn? Why is it that the head is done growing by the time the kid is eight years old, whereas the legs continue to grow all the way until 15? So a lot of the things that are written in your books, they will start making sense if you use my services for your assembly preparation. So you are not only just going to be scoring well on the exam, you will learn also how to explain things to your patient later on and be an excellent physician. Now, for example, you know, most doctors, um, they can't even tell the difference between a doctor and a physician. They think it's exactly the same thing. You know, they cannot tell me what the word diabetes means. Uh, they don't understand elasticity. There is a lot of things that you misunderstand and you're unaware of your misunderstandings. In fact, there was a study done in 2005 by USMLE, which showed that repeat attempters were failing on their exams, not because they didn't understand medicine, because they misunderstood medicine. So a lot of you over there, those who are struggling with these standardized tests, be it MCAT or USMLE or COMLEX, hey, take a deep look inside. Do you know the language very well? Hey, why is metacarpal called metacarpal? Why is metamylocyte called metamylocyte? Have you ever thought of those things? Why is diabetes called diabetes? Why is diaphysis called diaphysis? Why is diarrhea called diarrhea? Are you making the correct images in your mind as you're seeing those words? After all, what is on your test? There are only five components of your test. There are symbols, there are words, there are numbers, there are images, and there are sounds. That is all there is on your test. And uh, the more you can understand those, uh, those, those five things about the test, and you can learn to put it together, the better you'll get at answering those questions. So if it is medical knowledge that you need to improve, is it, if it's stamina that you want to improve, if it is skills that you want to improve, if it's confidence that you want to improve, if it's anxiety that you want to lower, if you want a higher score, you know, you should visit bestusmlytutor.com today. And welcome to Best USMLE Tutor. This is Dr. Malik signing off. Bye-bye.